Hello and welcome to the Romance Track here at Continual. Tonight we are talking about LGBTQ plus romance and paranormal romance. So we're going to talk about all the spooky goodness, but first let's let everybody introduce themselves, starting with Liv. Hi, um, I'm not muted. Nope. Okay, good. Um, I'm Liv <laughs> and I write MM historical or paranormal romance and sometimes both at the same time. Very good. Stephanie. Hi, my name is Stephanie Burke. I'm known as Flash. I'm a USA Today bestselling author who's had over 100 books to my belt. And I love mixing in my paranormal with my OBGTQ because it's just so much fun. So much things you can get away with. So, yay. <laughs> How about you, Ari? Uh, I'm Mari McKay. And with my writing partner, Rachel Langella, we write uh, contemporary MM romance as Ari McKay, and we write paranormal as Rachel Langella. Great. EJ. I'm EJ Russell. I write across the spectrum of uh, MM romance, contemporary, historical, but my main uh, wheelhouse is a paranormal um, rom-com, sort of quirky and uh, verging on um, screwball. So <laughs> <laughs> If it's not fun, why bother, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel Langella, and with my partner, Ari McKay, uh, we write a lot of different genres. Um, and one of them that we can, can coming back to is uh, romance. Okay, Raven. I am Raven DeHart, and I write mostly paranormal, a few contemporaries, but the main wheelhouse is uh, paranormal male male. Okay. And I'm Gail Z. Martin and Morgan Bryce. As Gail, I write epic and urban fantasy, lots of ghosts and vampires and werewolves there. And as Morgan Bryce, I write urban fantasy, male male paranormal romance with lots of ghosts and vampires and werewolves and plenty of spooky stuff and, and lots of magic. Uh, because every story is better with a ghost in it. Or two or three. <laughs> so what's the first book that you remember that got you hooked on all things paranormal? Stephanie? It would come to me. <laughs> there are so <laughs> many ears. Come on, you know. <laughs> There's I'm I'm it, I have to go back far, far to find my first real paranormals. And I think my first real paranormal that actually bordered on romance would be this one from an author I cannot find anymore, but the book was called Witch. And the thing that struck me was that this poor woman whose daughter popped up with this magical ability to do magic, and then there was the modern day witch hunts behind it. But the thing that grabbed me was the one of the gate, this guy was, his job was a gatekeeper. He was supposed to unlock the magic. And this dude was solidly in a male-male relationship but he still and yet had to go and have sex with all these other women to unlock their power. And it was the only way that his partner was like, I can divide the work. If it's a male witch, we're going to have issues. And it was just a little side thing. I was a teenager reading this story and it was like, wait, what? I never considered that. That's a whole new issue of issue, a list of issues that might happen with somebody in a relationship like this. I need to find more of this because it was so different. So I went digging and digging and digging and it was years before I found anything else similar to that. But that first one right there with that couple discussing their relationship issues in front of this woman who's like, I just need somebody to screw me so I can get the magic to save my child. Can somebody please, you know, get off your argument and help me. That was the most amazing thing in my teenage life at that point. So I've been trying to find something like that. I couldn't find it. I decided I was going to write it because it doesn't always have to be serious and death taking that little bit of humor in there it made them more real to me. It seemed like they were real people then. And I love that. So that was my first. Okay. All right. Oh, I started out with um, a lot of the old um, Alfred Hitchcock stories for children was mm -hmm. where I got my start in paranormal. Um, and probably the first big one that I ever read was Salem's Lot by Stephen King and that's where I started my love affair with vampires for forever. <laughs> Sounds fair to me. EJ? 
Um, actually, we have to go way back. Um, I was about eight or nine and visiting my grandmother in a very tiny town in Illinois. Their library was only open two days a week, um, two afternoons a week, in fact. And I found this book in a stack on the floor called Horace. And it had an embossed little dragon on the front, which I thought was very interesting. I'd never been exposed to that before. And it was, for one thing, it was a British fantasy, a British children's fantasy about a girl who um, meets a baby dragon on her way to the greengrocer one day and he invites her to tea which requires her to jump off the bridge and she finds herself in a in, in a world of of uh, dragons and it taught me so many things that book the first thing was to to learn from context to extrapolate from context because my grandmother had an eighth grade education she didn't know anything about you know british terminology so it's like what's a greengrocer do they only sell green food and she had a half she found a half a crown once well a half a crown wouldn't fit on your head really would it so it was it was like it opened up a whole new world and it, it not only um sort of instigated a, a lifelong love of the paranormal and fantasy but also of british um humor and british children's books and i sort of once i discovered diana Wynne jones it was like you know it was all over how about you rachel I kind of have to go way back as well. Um, I think I probably started dabbling uh, with fairy tales, like that laid the foundation. But when I was nine, I think, it was the year after the original Star Wars came out. Um, Roth Bakshi did a uh, Lord of the Rings animated movie, but he only went from uh, Fellowship of the Ring through the first half of the Two Towers. And the same enabling friend of the family who took me to see Star Wars the previous year took me to see this. And of course, I mean, it ended on a cliffhanger. And I was like, but what happened? And she was like, want to read the book? <laughs> and so that that's what did it. From there, it was just, you know, full on uh, C.S. Lewis. And then segue to Stephen King and no looking back since. I totally get that. Raven. So for like paranormal and fantasy in general, that's what I read growing up. For paranormal romance, I remember the first one and it was Nora Roberts' key trilogy, key of light, key of knowledge, key of power. And I remember reading that at an age that was not appropriate. We don't need to just, <laughs> we won't say what age it was, but I had a library card so but yeah so that was my first paranormal romance fairies and the, oh there's something evil in the, the love story that's odd yeah. I mean I got hooked on on all things paranormal as a preschooler watching dark shadows the old uh, spooky um, soap opera and that got me into vampires and werewolves and ghosts and witches and magic and time travel and all that good stuff and I went looking for more of it and I think the first book that I really remember uh, reading like that was um, Jane Emily. And it was a, this was before they called things YA, but it was a middle grades book and bought it at the Scholastic Book Fair. And it was about a headstrong girl who um, haunted the garden ball at her grandmother's house and wreaked havoc on the family. Uh, because of that haunted garden ball. And I've always given the side eye to garden balls ever since then. <laughs> They're suspicious and dangerous. Um, but I also read the, the Alfred Hitchcock and the Three Investigators and anything that had a, a whiff of ghost story in it because that was always just better. How about you, Liv? Um, so I don't remember, sort of. I was the kid who read a book a day in middle school and I used to reread the Lord of the Rings trilogy every year in at least once a year in high school and um I don't think this is the first vampire book that I read but the first one I really remember was Lestat and Rise mm -hmm. of the Vampire Lestat and that blew my mind and also made me completely dislike Louis 
And so I've never, like, I, I, when I read interview, I was just like, who is this whiner? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think the first, I'll, I'll wrap up quick, the first sort of um, urban fantasy paranormal that really sent me down a, a, the pathway that where I'm ending up today was um, Dead Until Dark, uh, the first Sookie Stackhouse book. Cause that was kind of the first urban fantasy series. And like from there I went to, that I, that I read. And then from there I went to um, Anita Blake and um, Morgan or Rachel Morgan and like pretty much name your popular urban fantasy series and that. So yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you, um, if you haven't already said what got you into paranormal romance and, um, and why, then let's tell me now. And if you have already, we'll come up with another few books to mention because there are plenty of good ones out there. Harry? Oh, well, <laughs> um, for the, I was always more of a science fiction reader, I'll be honest, that I was definitely more, and I still to this day read military science fiction. Um, that's like my, my first love, but I, um, I really got into a rather problematic nowadays fandom that I really don't want to give any more popularity to because mm -hmm. of what goes on, but it's actually where I met Rachel and we were doing, and it was a fantasy genre and there were some obviously, obviously to us, at least gay characters that you know, we always had our slash goggles on. So that was, that was where I really got into the whole, the whole thing was through fanfic. Um, because it wasn't other than maybe some, I mean, Thieves World had, you know, gay characters, obviously, but there were not as many, at least not in, um, in the mainstream kind of fiction that I was reading. So I got into fanfic very heavily. And that's, that's where I went into the, the gay romance and especially the paranormal gay romance. Okay, EJ. Gosh, that's a tough question. I was trying to remember. Like, like Ari, I also had, um, in addition to my fixation with British children's fantasy, um, science fiction, uh, uh, obsession as well because I was in sixth grade when the first episode of Star Trek TOS um, broadcast and I watched it with my dad and I think he regretted that ever after that because I was hooked on it. I had other other kids, I mean it, that was when I was like sixth grade going into middle school. The other girls had crushes on people like Bobby Sherman or you know other singers. I had a crush on Mr. Spock, not Leonard Nimoy, Mr. Spock. Um, in terms of the first gay uh, paranormal romance I read, I'm trying to remember. Um, and it was, I think I couldn't find any and that's why I wrote one. This was like back in 2011. And um, I had only recently discovered, uh, you know, Josh Lanyon's um, Adrian English series. Um, and Suzanne Brockman had written her uh, Jules and Robin uh, marriage story all through the night, but I didn't, there wasn't anything that um, sort of scratched the itch. At least I didn't know how to find it at that time. I suspect that there were a lot of books, but I didn't know about them, which is why I wrote my first ghost story book. My first published book was um, a supernatural suspense um, as a result of that. Cool. Rachel. So I think what got me into paranormal romance in general was probably uh, your standard male-female romance novels because I started reading those when I was in my early teens, um, perhaps younger. <laughs> um, and, you know, those were always kind of in the mix. Um, and, you know, this was, <laughs> this was a while back. So there were not any LGBT mainstream books there just weren't you know you if you were lucky you had you know kind of a 
a side character or background story. I think the closest one of my generation would be uh, Mercedes Lackey, the Valdemar books, which I I don't think I found those until I was in college. So yeah, it was just standard uh, male female romance, and I didn't get into LGBT male male romance until fandom fan fiction. Okay, how about you, Raven? Oh, I mean, like I said before, the. Nora Roberts books were my first paranormal romances for male male oh I don't even know it would have been around the time I started writing it probably so okay I was never into you know regular contemporary male female romance I just could never I never identified with the the women there they they just were not who I was or who I wanted to be. But if you threw in a vampire or a ghost or a werewolf, then I could look past some of those shortcomings. And a lot of times those books had um, female characters that weren't wilting daisies who were kicked some real ass and were much stronger characters. So I read um, Patricia Briggs's Mercy Thompson series and um, Sherilyn Kenyon's Dark Hunter series. And um, of course I read Interview with the Vampire, which probably counts as my first male-male romance because um, there was a lot of subtext there, even if they never really came out and said it, we all knew. Um, subtext is a scrambled word for butt sex. This is true, <laughs> more often than not. Um, and Dead Until Dark, the Sookie Stackhouse books. And I, I fell in love with Supernatural, no big surprise there. And I um, started to read the fan fiction and then I started to read the slash and really fell in love with the slash and said, this is so good. What does the published stuff look like? And the first series I happened upon was Jordan L. Hawk's uh, Wyborn and Griffin Wittershin series, which was just um, fantastic. And that, that's where Morgan Bryce came from because I decided this was just too much fun and I wanted to be in on it too. So yeah, that that's the that's the progression. How about you, Liv? Um, I think, well, you already heard my reading history probably more detailed than you necessarily needed. Um, but I do think as far as male male um paranormal, the f I I won't swear to it, but the first one I really remember um was the magpie lord series by kj mm -hmm. charles and um I, to this day i still want to be kj charles when i grow up <laughs> i think a lot of us do How about <laughs> stephanie well like i said which was the first one that i actually read that had male male element well was straight out male male even though they were secondary characters uh maybe even tertiary if you look at it some ways but they were there the thing that really got me into paranormal, though, I have to say, is Clan of the Cave Bear. Now, that's an interesting way to go about it, because I come from a long line of Southern root workers. So ghosts were not things that you play with in my family. No, you do not deal with that at all. But when I was about 12 years old, my mom tossed me Valley of the Horses. And she's like, well, this is book is thick enough. That'll keep you occupied. <laughs> She knew that that book was nothing but sex on top of sex with sex in between. But in the middle of all of that, the whole paranormal elements of her going back and having her told him talk to her and having the fantasies with the Mogur and all that, that struck me as like, oh, wow, that's not this scary, the devil's going to pop up behind a cornfield and shank me type of stories as I've been hearing about. This one's a lot more interesting. It's a lot more fascinating. So that kind of grabbed my attention towards the paranormal, which in turn pushed me towards Gene Aul. Oh, well, out of Gene, oh, excuse me, to um, uh, Anne McCaffrey and the Dragon Rider series. And it was like, wait, what? They're doing stuff like that. Because when the dragons went in the heat, I was like, oh. Once again, it was that feeling that I got when I stole my mom's Harlequins when I was like eight years old. Like, why is my belly feeling this way? That's really weird. It was that thing all over again. It was new. It was exciting. It was something I wanted to explore. So since I couldn't actually find things, people that look like me or the subjects that I really wanted into that, so I started writing it myself. And then when I started writing it, I found Small Press because Small Press was where all the good stuff was hanging out at. 
So it was like, okay, that's when you ran into your Kate Douglases or your Camille Anthony's who actually had the, you know, oh, she writing crack thick and getting away with it. That was Camille. That was her straight up and down. So that was another introduction to tell me, you know what, just because you were raised a certain way to believe certain things doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. Expand your horizons a little bit. See what other cultures and what other people have to feel about this. So I have a lot to thank the Valley of the Horses for, which in turn made me go back to read the Clan of the Caveman, which was like, oh, my God. and then the rest of the series. So yeah, that one mom tried to throw me something that she bought for 10 cents at a thrift store because it was thick, opened up a whole new world. And she regretted it because I started making her <laughs> stuff. Like, mom, read this. Oh my goodness. Stephanie, how old are you to be writing this stuff? What happens next? So I sorely put the blame on this on her. It's all her fault. <laughs> yeah, there were definitely, my, my parents had a, a rule that I could, you know, if we went to a, the mall and I went to a bookstore, I, I could ask for a couple of books and that, that wish was going to be granted. I, you know, wasn't going to get a record album. I wasn't going to get other stuff, but if I asked for books, I could be pretty sure I could get one or two. They never looked inside those books. Um, there was no concept of age appropriate. <laughs> I learned so much, not all of it accurate, but I learned a lot. But it was so much fun. It was so much fun in the learning. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and my husband later confessed that when he joined a book club, he picked the selections that had the asterisk next to them that said mature content. He didn't care what the book was. He got all the ones with the mature content as a teenage boy would. So <laughs> we all had ways to work the system. When my grand, my, when I was like eight or nine, my grandmother said, oh, this book has a dragon on the cover. It was Red Dragon. <gasps> yeah. Lights on, sleeping with the lights on. <laughs> Can't stop reading, though. <laughs> so when you started writing and you got this this love for paranormal and romance. Um, what, how have you brought that together? What kinds of things do you write about? And what are the things, um, what, what kinds of stories do you write now that bring those things you love together? EJ? Well, the first um, series that I started to write, I wrote a couple of the supernatural suspense books at the very beginning of my career. Um, but the first uh, series that I started, which is, has sort of blossomed into um, a story world with now 15 books in it, um, was based on Celtic mythology, uh, because I had read Evangeline Walton's um, retake of the Mabinogian when I was working at a bookstore um, in the mid 70s. And I was very, I was fascinated with how different Celtic mythology was from, you know, classical Greek or Roman. I mean, the stories were very very different, very peculiar. I mean, they didn't have the same kind of um, story arcs that a lot of the classical stuff did. But the characters and the kinds of magic and the different kinds of, um, you know, the conflicts among the species I found very interesting. So I started with my first Fae Out of Water series was a trilogy based on um, on Celtic mythology. And that, that world has grown adding you know, different species over time that aren't necessarily Celtic, um, but pretty much all of the, the paranormal that I write um, is, has some kind of mythological hook to it because I'm a very reactive writer. Um, the, when I get an idea, it's, it's in response to something else that I've heard or seen. So those kinds of stories, the mythological stories, fairy tales, they spark the idea for the next story. So I've, I, I've sort of branched off now from Celtic. I've got one book that's, that's actually brings in the Greek pantheon because you know they needed to get their asses kicked because they were not good people. Um, but it, it, it's, it's so much fun because you can take that as a jumping off point and then make shit up which is one of the things I like the most about writing paranormal. It's like, as long as I'm consistent with my own world, it can be anything I want it to be. Absolutely. Rachel? Um, I think the main thing that uh, Ari and I have been 
veering towards is urban fantasy, uh, our uh, Asheville Arcana series. Um, personally, I think uh, my jam is more like gothic horror. I, I like spooky. I love spooky. Um, and so the, you know, the inclusion of that type of thing and, and Ari's love of action, that's how we got Asheville Arcana. It's like it's the merging of our two very different interests um, in a way that works for us. Okay. Raven? So probably the primary paranormals I have are shifter romances, but almost all of it is UF of some kind. UF romance so sort of falls in that territory of like I'm not all the way fantasy but it's pretty fantasy heavy I wrote urban fantasy with minimal romance uh on the Gail Z. Martin side before I started into the Morgan Bryce stuff so I've always loved making up magic systems and spell work and um you know, looking at what kind of gems and, and uh, plants are magical and what are some of the traditions across all the different types of craft. And so when I started the Morgan Bryce stuff, I, I had never, I hadn't fallen for a fandom like I fell for Supernatural since back in the day when I originally fell for Star Trek, the original series. And so I looked at it and said, well, what what is really getting me about this? What's lighting a fire in me about this, this TV show and these characters? Why do I care so much? And I tried to answer that and find the elements that made me love it so much and then find ways to put them in original stories that still had the, the paranormal aspect, the ghosts, the magic, the, the monsters, but in you know original settings and, and original stories. And so that's my hope with with my books is if if that's the kind of stuff you like I've got more of the same thing with with the same kind of vibes because that's what I go for when I'm looking for a book by somebody else is does it have those vibes okay I'm in Liv um I suppose to well I suppose to an extent I'm like EJ sort of a reactive reacting to what's going on around me typewriter um uh I when my oldest kid was in middle school. We watched all seven seasons of Buffy. And out of that came my first published book, um, which was a vampire story that, it was sort of a mashup of Buffy and Spider-Man. It worked, I don't know. Um, fast forward five, six, seven years. And I was sort of breaking up with the Catholic church, which, you know, that's big. And out of that came Thaddeus Dupont, who's the vampire character I write um, in uh, the Hours of the Night series uh, that I co-write with Irene Preston. And uh, that's, he's, I get to sort of, through Thaddeus, get to explore my feelings about, as he's adapting to modern life, how am I adapting? I don't know. And uh, then my most recent series, uh, Soulmates, uh, honestly, is it's, MMM paranormal. There's a vampire, a shifter, and I'm not sure quite what he is. Uh, and, but it's, I, I started it during, I had started it a while ago and then picked it back up and, and really expanded from a novella to a novel and now three novels and a couple of shorts. Um, but it was during the pandemic. Oh, oh it was during, okay. It was during that time. Um, and, I really wanted to make it as glossy and glitzy and sexy and pretty as I could because I real life was just a brag. So yeah, that's sort of how my paranormal gets filtered through my life or vice versa. That makes sense. Stephanie? <laughs> <sighs> well, how, that's kind of hard because I'm a sci-fi baby myself. So, you know, the first novel I wrote was about a pregnant man who crash landed on a planet and gave birth to twins. Oh, sweet revenge. So um, when I decided to try to loop a little paranormal in there, 
I didn't even realize I was doing it. It was just for a short story and a collection of uh, a single author anthology of short stories. I just threw that in because it was cute. And it actually grabbed a lot of attention. It was like, wait a minute, people are having fun with this. Let's see if I can push this a little bit more. So then I started delving into different gods and different pantheons and in different cultures, not just the pantheons that we know. I wanted to get into some that we didn't know too much about. So I was heavily into the Chinese and Japanese uh, pantheons. Sometimes it was Indian. And then, you know what? It was like, you know what? Let's just mix them all together. And we were mixing them all together because we have all these Asians over here now. Let's pull some Native Americans in and let's go back to the Southern roots and let's pull that in. It's like a gateway drug. You open it up and you start learning about something. It grabs your attention. It fascinates you. You want more. I mean, I want more than the person who trips through the fairy ring or slides through a mirror. Let's just say, you know, just take the Asian perspective. You are minding your own business, but evil noticed you. And because evil noticed you, you now have a problem. Doesn't matter if you're good or bad. Things like that and the way different cultures pro approach their paranormal has always been fascinating to me. So then I started grabbing and learning everything I can. And if I learn something, I'll automatically want to share it with a whole bunch of people. So that just led to me writing more and more and more. I think one of the first solid series that I did that definitely was straight out for paranormal for this purpose was um, the book, the series I bought for my daughter. I made for my daughter, the Mayfly Mystery Series. And that's the one where I actually incorporated the Fae into modern society with everyday life starting around World War II and it worked up to now. So we had action, we had adventure, we have murder mysteries going on, all involved with a character that's roughly designed with my daughter's attitude in mind, which was great. People loved it. And from that one, we went to um, the Wild Hunt, which is a lot of Celtic mythology. Who else is going to find Charon, the, you know, the Scottish devil, and make him like the master of a BDSM club? Why not? It's always it's always in there. It's in there anyway, because he's got that, you know, love of leather and whipping people. Let's just throw that all in there and make fun with it. So anything that actually grabs my attention will eventually find its way into a book. If not immediately, then I'll hold on to that thought. And so something else makes me wreck because sometimes like a bunch of you guys, I can be a reactionary author as well. But sometimes I'll sit back on it and I'll think about it. And I'll actually plot it out mentally before I go ahead and try to put it down to pen, pen to paper, so to speak. So it depends. But if I have that thought of something caught my attention, I'll hold on to the research for that until I feel it's needed. So my paranormal experience at this point is all over the place. You can't pinpoint one thing that I'm really in love with because I'm just in love with the other uh, world. No matter what culture, no matter, no matter what group it comes from, I'm just fascinated. So my escapism, I really want to escape everything when I get into my escapism and paranormal is like a perfect way to do that. Oh, I hear you on that. Ari, how about you? Well, strangely enough, the, uh, the very first thing that um, Rachel and I wrote for publication was um, Blood Bathory Like the Night. And that is, it's vampires and shifters, but um, the the so weird story with that one is that the whole idea for that book came from the fact that when we were writing fanfic we wrote this one fanfic where the two main characters had left their magical world and we wanted them to bond over something and so we created this fictional tv show called blood bathory and so it was just for a fanfic we created this whole world and then it's like hey that would make a book and in fact, it made three books. And the, um, as always, you know, we tend to, to mix a little science with our paranormal and the shifters. There's actually scientific reasons behind why vampires are vampires and why shifters are shifters, rather than purely paranormal reasons of why, you know, it's not, it's not magic, it's something else, but it's still paranormal. So those, those books will always be near and dear to my heart because they were the first ones we wrote. Awesome. So what aspect of paranormal romance haven't you written yet but would like to? Rachel? Um, I am not sure because we've covered a gamut. We've got uh, ghost stories. We've got uh, historical paranormal. Um, we got urban fantasy. Um, we've covered a lot. I think if 
it, if we could do a full length ghost story, like book length, we've done a sort of like a, a short story novella length, um, but just, you know, this old British Victorian ghost in the attic, classic Gothic horror in the vein of, um, you know, Wuthering Heights and Dracula and, and all of those good, you know, Victorian Gothic stories. If we did a full length book like that, I would just be squeeful. <laughs> How about you, Raven? I have not yet managed to get around to any ghost PNR. I would love to. I have like three or four different half baked outlines for them. So at some point it'll happen, but I haven't gotten there yet. And I'd like to. I did a story for um, a large prolific works giveaway that includes ghost sex and figuring out how that was going to work was a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, but I did. I remember that. <laughs> We've done it. And uh, there was another one that included sex magic, and that was kind of fun. But um, I'm excited. I'm doing a gothic romance, true gothic, spooky, scary, on the moors kind of thing for um, Falstaff Books next year. And I've had, it's one that I've, I've had the outline for for a couple of years now and just didn't get it in the pipeline. And I'm really excited about that because I, I loved all those uh, really suspenseful, creepy house at the end of the long lane with all the fog and, you know, something's in the attic and yeah, that, I love that. So I'm looking forward to that. How about you, Liv? Um, I apparently am a copycat because I really do want to write a good haunted house. Um, I've done- There's room for another good haunted house. There's always an effort. Um, we I've done ghosts with uh, uh, what's the the book that we just published with Irene. Um, anyway, sorry I can't remember my own damn book titles, but um, uh, yeah I've been reading a lot of of haunted house and and enjoying it, and I'm like yeah I got to throw my hat in that ring. Okay, Stephanie, I'm gonna have to take. I don't have to go along with everybody else in harmony with everybody else's comments. I'm gonna have to go ghost because it is so hard for me to step away from my upbringing. And I know I would like to think that oh, it will be easy. I knew that there are different ways and different perspectives, but it's still hard to get past that. Ghosts are no good. They're not bad. They're not in everything evil. Don't touch this. This is stuff that you shouldn't touch with. That upbringing is kind of hard to get over. So I have like a million outlines that I started, story snippets that are in work that I started, but I stopped because it doesn't quite feel right or it's not conveying what I wanted to convey. So I'm still working on it. I'm going to have that really great ghost story. I might even have ghost sex. It might even be evil ghost sex. And I mean, not incubus type. I might even have the heroine turn evil to be with the evil ghost. That sounds more plausible with something I want to do. But either way, I'm going to have to buckle down shut up stop whining and just let my you know imagination run free with this like stop listening to what your parents said you're grown now so i'll get that into my psyche and it's like okay no longer have to work out for my you know root working aunties to see if they're going to pop around a corner and be like you're doing wrong you're doing wrong so i'm going to get that ghost and that ghost is going to be perfect and the ghost is going to be kinky and doing some really weird stuff just because I want to get over this whole ghost thing. Because I know the first one, it'll pop open the dam and then there'll be all kinds of ghosty goodies that are flowing through. So yeah, I want that ghost. <laughs> I get that ghost. Ari? Oh, I'm going to say that I don't really want to write ghosts, but <laughs> um, so I'll be, the, I'll be the odd person out here. And what I really, really, really want to write is um, I would like to do a shared world um very much like thieves world high fantasy mm kind of thing because thieves world is one of my my great and first loves and as far as the the fantasy type genre and i just think that getting you know a whole bunch of authors together and having shared characters and being able to to do that would be just so much fun 
EJ volunteers. What I'm hearing is that we're going to have your shared, we're all going to be in your shared world and the rest of us are going to make a ghost romance box set. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, I think you've, you've got that right. EJ, how about you? Well, before I start, I, I just want to um, ask um, Ari if she's ever read Terry Windling's uh, Border Town yep. stories. Look those up because they're really fabulous. It's it's a uh, sort of post-apocalyptic. The the apocalyptic thing that happened is that fairy comes back, and it sort of completely disrupts um, this Minnesota town. It's really they're wonderful stories. But um, I'm going to sort of veer into back into the ghost territory a little bit. Um, I've got an idea about a post-apocalyptic I want to write, um, and uh, possibly some more science fiction. But I, um, my most recently completed series was a, was a mashup of cozy mystery and paranormal romance. And I kind of want to do the same thing with, um, with ghosts. Um, not necessarily put the ghosts in the, uh, the love interest, but make it a mashup of supernatural ghost um, uh, presence and cozy mystery. Um, so I've got an idea for a series about that. And the other reason I want to revisit ghosts, my first, my first book was a ghost story, but it was much darker. And I want to make it funny. So <laughs> humorous, cozy, paranormal ghost mystery stories. Sounds like a winner to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Now we have blown through our time, but I want to go around real quick and let everybody say where people can find you online. And if you have a new, recent, or upcoming book, let us know about it, starting with you, Raven. Um, so if you want to find my work, you can find it at ravendehart.com or I'm Raven DeHart, basically anywhere there's social media. And the newest PNR is on, uh, you can't get it on Amazon, but you can get it on Steam or on Google Play Store. It's called Freshman Magic Spellbooks and Tangled Sheets. Ooh, sounds good. I'm galesymartin.com and morganbryce.com. All the social media is a variation of either of those names. So spell them right and you'll find me. Uh, my most recent uh, PNR was um, No Surrender in my Badlands series. And that's got all kinds of ghosts and, and supernatural elements. And the next one coming up soon is Again, which is the second book in my Fox Hollow Shifter series. So lots going on there. Liv? So um, you can find me at liverancourt.com or on most social medias, uh, some variation of live at liverancourt, at live.rancourt, something. It's, I'm, I'm not terribly creative <laughs> that way. Um, and my most recent release was Redeemed, which is book three in my Soulmate series, which again is MMM Paranormal. And um, I am pondering what to do next. Okay. Stephanie. You can find me at authorstephanieburke.online. All my social media links are there, like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram that I hardly ever use, <laughs> that I've been abusing. All of my social links are there. And the latest story that I had just dropped last Thursday, it actually is a paranormal. It's called Dragon Lord. It's book two in the How Not to Drain a Dragon part of the How Not to Date series. And this one is female, female. I have one asexual female with her partner and she gets to turn to basically partner with a dragon who thinks humans are disgusting, but like what kind of cute little pets to keep around. So he's hoarding females <laughs> and he has a whole army of very angry PMSing females that are about to wage war. It's the second book in the third book series and that's called um, Dragon Lord. Nice, Ari? Um, you can find me and Rachel at ariamckay.com. Our latest release is A Prince Among Men. That's not paranormal, but it did just uh, come out last week. And in fact, one week ago today. And our upcoming books, um, we have some historicals that are being re-released, some historical westerns that'll be coming out in the next couple of months. And we are currently working on the next in the Asphyll Arcana series, which is called Hidden Magic. Okay, Rachel. You're muted. Whoops, sorry. Um, can't really add a whole lot. Uh, yeah, Ari and I share a website, arimckay.com. 
um, and that has our socials listed on it. Um, our last paranormal was uh, Stop Dragging My Heart Around. Um, and we are working on uh, a new Asheville Arcana, which features a, uh, a non-binary puka. <laughs> EJ, how about you? My most recently um, re released paranormal romance was um, the 15th book in my myth matched world called uh, it's called the skinny on Ginny and it's actually kind of a new adult uh, um, story very um, very low low heat low angst um, and before that um, I completed the first four books in my quest investigation series five dead herrings the hound of the Burgervilles lady under the lake and death on denial my um the best place to find me is at my website ejrussell.com all my social links are there all right well folks thank you so much for a wonderful conversation this has been a lot of fun and i can't wait to go find all of your books and read them and thanks all of you for watching and listening there'll be more lgbtq more romance and more paranormal stuff coming up here on continual so we'll see you online <laughs>